what's going on everybody hope y'all having a great day it's beautiful over here at mb heritage farm today we're going to be talking to you guys about the cons of using wood shaving with your chickens long term you guys stay tuned this is going to be a good one The reason why we're covering this subject today is because we are some of the people that use wood shavings diligently. Every Cooper run you see that we have here has shavings as a flooring. It will cause a problem long term and we're going to go over that today. Believe well, here we are in our coaching Bantam Coop and uh, as you can tell it's full of shavings. And every Cooper run that we have has sawdust and shavings and there's some diatomaceous earth in there. We always line our coops with that pretty much bi-weekly. As far as a chicken can dig down, there's maybe about eight or nine inches of wood shavings here. Now, while this stuff is awesome, it helps keep the coop dry, uh, really soft for the chickens to walk on. It helps prevent a lot of foot injuries and things like that. It also causes problems long-term. And I'm going to go ahead and explain to you what I mean by long-term problems. Now, again, let me stress by saying wood shavings and wood chips is probably the best thing that we use in our runs and coops, we love it. But after a long period of time, after your chickens, roosters and hens both spend a lot of time on top of really soft wood chips, it starts to create problems with toenails, spurs, and things like that. So normally, when a chicken is scratching another type of substance other than wood shavings or a soft bottom, uh, they're always filing down their nails. When they're doing dust bath, they're doling down the spurs and things like that. But in these soft bottoms, when these chickens are walking around, scratching, taking dust baths, there's really nothing here hard enough to keep those toenails filed down. Now, over a long period of time, those spurs and toenails can get really long and cause a really bad problem later on. And I'll go ahead and show you what I'm talking about right now. It's that time of the month, about once a month, we come down, we trim spurs, we trim toenails, only in the show coop because this is where these guys have uh, lots and lots of layers of shavings a really soft bottom and uh, they're always the ones that need it most the rest of our roosters they usually get a spur trimming one time a year and uh, we'll check out the toenails while we're doing that but they never our outdoor chickens free range chickens and open range chickens never need this type of service but if you have chickens that are in a cooper run with the shelter over or anything that has a whole lot of wood shavings or wood chips at the bottom that's not naturally rotten and decaying over time and staying soft 24 7 you're going to run into some problems if you don't keep a check on your chicken's toes and spurs i'll show you what to look for and we're going to show you how to fix it now we have two roosters in here we have a light modeled and a dark modeled both of these roosters are under a year old so they really don't have any spurs to trim so we'll be skipping that today, but we will pick that up on another video and show you guys how we do it. Okay, now I'm going to take some pictures and throw it for you guys too. But as you can see, here's some of those toenails that I'm talking about. They get excessively long, and then when they get that real curl tip on, once the chicken starts walking, that tip cannot flatten out. So what it does is it rolls over to the side, twisting your chicken's toe in an unnatural position, causing pain. And eventually that toenail will curl back into the feet causing infection and it can lead to death so we're going to show you guys how to do this safely not cut into the quick cause any bleeding we're going to go right here just where the clearish looking transparent part of the nail is you get into the pink and you're going to cause some blood so normally what we like to do is they're going to be spastic but tuck their head behind your arm try to keep them calm if their feet's upside down that's okay you still can see the transparent part of it but we're going to take the scissors and turn it flat level with the foot of the toe and we're going to get right on the tip and we're going to take the first tip off now we'll go to the next one right there on those clear tips that's all and then we'll come back and file some of those and get the sharper points off of it but you just want to make sure you just get that clear notice you don't even feel anything for long as we're going to go ahead and get a couple more done. We'll show you guys what we're doing. So again, we're just going to lay the scissors flat so they're not angled. Give them just a little bit of length there. And then I'm going to go ahead and trim so that end off. And that's it.
You don't want to go into the darker spots or the pink spots of the toenail, but if you do and you get just a little blood, it's perfectly fine. Don't panic. Uh, what you can do is add a little bit of triple antibiotic ointment to it, but make sure you don't use anything that has any pain reliever in it whatsoever. Just plain old regular triple antibiotic ointment. Put a little dab on the toenail and it'll be perfectly fine. All you want to do is stop air from getting in on the bloody spot and it'll kind of help protect the dirt from going in there. Of course, it will hold on the dirt, but there'll be a little protective layer to help out. Anyway, you guys will see this is easier than what you think. It's just like cutting the baby's fingernails. So thank you guys for watching. Just like that little engine. Keep on keeping on. We'll see you guys on the next one.